Right, it's 2010. I'm just going to do a cassette tape recording of my revisit in 2008 to a place called Stretchworth, where since 2005 I have made many discoveries on our Clayton, Claydon and Briggs ancestors. Discovering many graves I cleaned up. This tape is known as t to be dodgy. The first part doesn't work, so I've had to go on to counter number 071. Also, the speed might change. There could be problems, which I won't know until I play it now. Here we go. Let's try it. Well, I think the bucket went wrong, so what I'm, I won't be taking any photos. Well, I'll take the camera, but base unless I find anything. Because um, well, I've got pictures of Stretchworth from before. It's only if I come across a different grave. It looks like they've actually cut this. So it's not all, you know, six foot high. I'll take the umbrella and hope it doesn't thunder. Oh, this is so exciting, family tree. I love it, everybody. We can know it some of the clay, clay dens now, because I think we're connected. Edward Richard Clayden died May 3rd, 1960, age 84. Also, beloved mother, Alice Minnie Clayden died February the 25th, 1969, age 74. Through the marriages. The Claydons are linked by the Briggs Mass. All this will be sorted out eventually. This tape is damp. Um, so it's the progress that you make. That's why it the keeps slipping. Tree develops. And, oh, this is a good one. This is definitely, I must take a picture of this. Because it's got the Bradford in it as well. In loving memory of Anne Bradford Briggs, who died the 13th of October 1939, Age 73, loved and remembered. And uh, also James Briggs, who died the 21st of July 1955, aged 91. So that is an important grave. Right next to that, Anne um, Bradford Briggs, there's another grave of Julia Elizabeth Briggs, who died 1956, aged 95. I don't know if she had a first name, but. Julia Elizabeth. That's right next door. That's a flat, what I call a flat grave of um, Julia Elizabeth Briggs. So somewhere there's a bloke, somebody else who died age 72 in 1938, February the 7th. Samuel Briggs. There we go. Samuel Briggs. God bless. Yeah, that would be Samuel could be a son of Samuel. You married Alice. Can I get next door? You've got Samuel Briggs. Who died in 1938. Age 72. And his wife Julia Elizabeth Briggs. Next to them, there's a Walter W. Watson, who died in 1932, age 82. Just in case there's any relationship. The side of Anne Bradford Briggs is Gertrude Seymour. She died in 1995, in her 67th year. Take a long, I'm trying to get a shot of that if I can. But I'm just wondering, that's pretty good, isn't it? Day, and this is the newer part of the cemetery, let alone the old bit. I spent old Samuel Briggs Seniors in the only the, over there. A lot of these are very mussed up, which is a shame. If I live nearby, I'd make sure I um, tidied these graves up properly. The old part of the graveyard, don't forget. Uh, the new part, I mean. So, I've found three graves already. I've probably got them down on the old tape, you know, without realising the connection exactly. Because I, when I first started, because I, I wanted to plot all the people in the graves. Um, found another Clayton now. William Charles Clayton who died on the 15th of November, 1955, aged 76. 
Uh, also, our dear son William, who died the 30th of August, 1947, age 41. Peace, perfect peace. And then there's Ethel Louise Claydon, who died 1968, age 80, I think it's 82. That's square surround. Um, low type of stone. I'll take a picture of this one. And here, John George Claydon, about 1944, 83. That's a little metal type monument thing. It's got unmarked graves there. There's a dual row of Batemans. on the surface, a lot of stones um, gone now. In fact, each time I come back, I think there's more, less, less and less stones. There gradually won't be any. This part of family tree will be very difficult to do. It will turn the back now. I think there's more in the old part. Right, so that's okay. We found a Bradford Briggs, and we found some Claydons. Um, and when that last time I was here, it was really overgrown. Boot of an underground. Real registers, really. Yeah, you know, some sort of horn. Just been talking to it. Of course, Stretchworth. Graveyard is split in two. You've got a little tiny road leading up to the stud farm. And you've got the new bit, and then you go over where the church is, where you've got the the older bit. And I'm come back again, everybody. You married, um, but yeah, Tom Mason, yeah. So I never know if they're related. Length. Some's pruned, some ain't. Little church. What pictures of Zara where I'm walking now? Very old gravestones sit in here, but the most of them are hard to read. Very hard to read. Lincoln, there's a lot of those. Hammonds, another one. Frost. I have got all these on tape, I'm sure, because I was quite thorough when I did these. To be Briggs's and Biddens in this side. This is the old bit. I say the stones are. And just for a minute. Look. There's this great big manged land people. And I'm there. I just found Bert Claydon, the beloved husband of Anne Claydon. Who departed this life August the 31st, 1884, age 72. See, so these could be relatives of mine, you see. Yeah, more a picture of this one. So this is Robert and Anne Claydon. In affectionate remembrance of. Then it's got, it has got an inscription. The Lord gave and the Lord have taken us. <coughs> oh yeah, Anne's down the bottom. She's in here as well. <coughs> also Anne, his wife. She died 1895, age 81. So they're both in there. A lot of, most of these are unrecognizable. They're the old type with a little cherubim angel type thing on the top, low set in the ground, although Robert Clayton's is a bit higher up. They could have been higher as well, they could have been embedded. And all these are really quite unreadable. The only way you can find out now where they are is to get the, um, the burial plot. I always remember this bit being the, they seem to leave this bit. I'm going to take another picture further away of that grave.
Another good discovery. I've had to peel off a load of ivy. It's an old, very old grave. In, under, in these day, day and age, it's old anyway. In memory of Margaret, wife of Rob Clay, Clayton, who died March the 17th, 1797. And it looks like a hundred and one years, or it could be 70. It could be a hundred and one years though. 101, Margaret, wife of Rob Clayton. Clayton. I've just been peeling off the ivy of the one next door. And there you've got Robert Clayton. Um, back to this life, February the 7th, 1823, aged 71 years. So he died, you know, about uh, 30 years after her. So I, I don't know if she'd be 101. I reckon she would have... It's hard to see if that... It looks like 101. But it could be 40. Yeah, I think she might have been 40. Not 101. So Margaret was 40. And then you've got some... So I'm going to take pictures of both of these. They're old. I've got another one. Memory to the memory of John Clayton, who died January, could be the 18th or 17th, and it could be 1847, age 70, and Anne, his beloved wife, who died 1819. So I had to I cleared the top of that one off completely. That's in a much worse state. It might, I might not have done it any good, but the ivy actually does destroy. That's a good one to take, but it's very bad condition. I'm going to take a picture of a group one now. I've cleared the ivy right off them. Three in a row. It's about a dozen now. It'd be a day's work to do them all. So many, but I've cleared them, to them off. And they expose themselves to the air and be remembered. It's all gone on the website, because this is all recent stuff, finding the Clay Claytons and Claydons. We never knew that connection exactly last time, so that's pretty good. There's a couple of others here. God, what a brilliant discovery. I've just found... I'm going to have to go back to the car in a minute, because I can't remember the connections, but I've got it all on a bit of paper. But I've just found a very old grave. It's a, what I call a twin one with the inscriptions. It's sort of like a book split down the middle with turbans on top and lots of nice little squiggles. It's in good condition. It's a solid stone. It's deep in the ground. And there might be more down further, but I'm going to get my... Right, in memory of... I can't... I think it could be... It could be Elizabeth, but I'm not sure at the moment of her, what her name is. I'll have to look at me a bit of paper. Anyway, she's the wife of Edward Briggs. Departed this life, something the 23rd, 1731. I don't know if she was 66. Then you've next, in the other side of the book on this tablet, you've got a memory of Edward Briggs. Departed this life, April the 17th, 1746. Edward Briggs, who died in 
1846. We've got to the memory of Edward. This goes in a sort of arc shape. This is a um, similar type stone with a cherubim on it and all the little frilly bits. Solid stone. I've just removed all the ivy. It comes off quite easy once you get going on it. It's really got quite clean stone actually. It might even protect it but every now and again it needs to be exposed. Anyway, to the memory of Edward, the son of Edward and Elizabeth Briggs who died. This is where it gets hard to handle blossom.
and there's another one that's equally unreadable. Somewhere along the line. And anyway, 
remember about that. There weren't many graves. They'd all been tidied up. It was a very neat church with a round tower. So I wasn't looking for Claydens and Briggses then. <coughs> well, the Briggses, those were two trees I, well, Briggs especially as a tree I hadn't started on. Because all I had was Mary Ann Briggs. And through help from other people on the tree, I've been able to locate other names which have left me off on other trails. Because I always thought that Mary Ann Briggs was the daughter of John Briggs and Thomason Sharp. But it turns out, I think it was Tom, yeah, and that, that this woman said, no, Mary Ann was born in Dullingham and her father was Samuel Briggs and Alice Clayton or Clayton. And they gave me like a whole tree, which I've been checking as well myself. I've been doing work and I've got it written in my book in the archives yesterday, so it was valuable what I did. I know you can buy it all on CD and some of it might be online. Um, you have to come and do it yourself, uh, look through the records yourself to confirm for yourself, in, you know. N not always take for granted what other people give you, because people do, like myself, do make errors. So it could be that that John Briggs went off to Australia with some others. Because, um, you know, because she was spelled Mary Marianne, as opposed to Mary Ann, which has always thrown me a bit. But anyway, they're still related, because Samuel and John were brothers. So if I'm going down the wrong route, I'm still doing the tree, and, and they still have the same grandparents, so in a way, <coughs> yeah, I'll start, I've got to accept that, that she was from Dullingham. And go from there. But, and plus, she, who she married. But there were two Mary... Mary Briggs, you see, and you know, one of them went has gone missing. Right, that's the end for now. I'm going to go and the rain stop for a minute. I'm going to go and look for another Clayton grave or Briggsy. Right, <coughs> in the memory of James Clayton, who died January something or other, <coughs> 1885, age 77. And also Elizabeth, wife of John Davis, daughter of the above, who died May the 27th, 1890. Yeah, Elizabeth, who became a Davis, who died aged 58. Not just behind her, there's another one, Catherine, wife of James Clayton, <coughs> who died December the 25th, Christmas Day, 1869. Age 56. Also, something to her children. Have them to, yeah. Right, I've now arrived at Little Well Neatham. And I drove past Ruhama. Right, I'm just going to stop the tape there before I start roaming on about Little Well Neatham because I'd rather put that on the separate section even though it's um, near the end of this side of the tape I'm just going to try and keep it a bit split up a bit it makes it easier really so that's the end of Sheila at Stretchworth at her revisit obviously I'd been back several times before when we 2006 2005 was the first time um, but of course over those years I made a lot of discoveries with the help of other people online who had seen my tree and they and they pass some more information t to me and I, I help them out with other bits and pieces. Um, and of course the Briggses of Stretchworth are linked to one of my great 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 grandmothers who's Mary Ann Briggs or Mar Marianne Briggs. Um, 
who came from Dullingham, but her, her family and the Briggses were a, a, a big Stretchworth family. It's all very close. The, the, these villages are all within miles of each other, you know, a few miles of each other, walking distance. So everyone married the girl or the boy from the village next door, you know, that sort of thing. And then, of course, there was the, the discovery with the Claydons, and somewhere within the Claydon tree, the, the Stupvilles come in. I've got a Stupville man who married a Claydon girl. So it all links up lovely. Over and out for now.